Good morning, folks, and welcome to your favorite TV show, MD Consultants. As you know, each week we talk about a specific medical condition with the hope to not only educate our viewers about a particular disease, but to also prepare them for our first consultation with their family physician. So this week, we'll be focusing on a common bone condition called osteoporosis. This word originates from the English word osteo, meaning bones, and the Greek word poros, meaning pores. Put together, these two words effectively describe the results of this condition, which is basically pores in your bones. Today, we have Dr. Phil, who is our first guest expert, and he will give us more information about osteoporosis. Thanks, Dr. Oz, for having me on the show. As many as one in three women in North America will be affected by osteoporosis at some point in their lives. With osteoporosis being such a prevalent disease, it really does deserve the attention that you're trying to give to it. And for those of you sitting at home, think about your two closest girlfriends. One out of you three might be affected by osteoporosis at some time in the near future. But the question really is, why is osteoporosis such a prevalent disease? We have to understand that bones, like any other organ in the body, are constantly undergoing change. There's a battle between bone breakdown, which is done by osteoclasts, and bone buildup, which is done by osteoblasts. This process is known as bone remodeling. Sometimes, one of these processes might outcompete the other. And when osteoclast activity, or bone breakdown, is a prevailing one, that is when our bones are prone to becoming brittle, porous, and incurring serious damage. There are many reasons which may explain this imbalance in bone remodeling. For women specifically, things like calcium deficiency, hormonal imbalances, and a lack of estrogen could cause these issues. So thank you very much, Dr. Phil, for explaining some of the causes and symptoms of this disease. Um, now that we have a better understanding of the mechanism of action, let's figure out how we actually know if we have osteoporosis. For this discussion, we're going to consult a world-renowned researcher, and arguably, one of the best physicians of our time, Dr. Drake. To start off, uh, it's very important to understand that which group is most at risk to develop this condition. Um, there are definitely gender differences. Uh, Postmenopausal women are more than twice as likely to develop this condition as men. And in addition, there is also a genetic component. So if osteoporosis does run in your family, it would be best to err on the side of caution and immediately consult your physician. In addition, lifestyle choices such as uh, poor nutrition, smoking, and vitamin D deficiency may also increase your risk to develop osteoporosis. And, and finally, uh, low BMI is also strongly associated with developing a higher chance of osteoporosis. And um, you can trust me on this one because uh, I am a real doctor. Thank you for all of the information, Dr. Dre. You truly are one of the greatest doctors of our time. So now that we have an understanding of some of the symptoms and causes of osteoporosis, it's important to focus in on the at-risk viewers and really help them prepare for a first consultation with their family physician. To do this, we're going to invite Ms. Morris on the show, who is our model patient for today. Hi, Dr. Oz. I was recently spending a Friday night on WebMD, as I usually do, and I noticed I have some of the risk factors for osteoporosis. Well, thank you for sharing and coming onto the show. We can certainly help prepare you for your first consultation um, with some of the information that we provide here. So the first thing your doctor will try to do is actually diagnose your condition with the aid of some medical tests. So to prepare you for this, we actually have a guest expert, Dr. McDreamy, who will walk you through this procedure and tell you what it looks like. So if you can actually just walk over to our medical examiner room, uh, Dr. McDreamy will meet you there and explain the process. Hey Megan, so basically the first thing we would do is ask you some standard life questions. Like what's your age, what's your sex, do you have any family history regarding osteoporosis? And then we move on to more lifestyle choices, like do you smoke, what's your diet like, what's your vitamin D intake like, and so on and so forth. So, let me into your life, Megan. So I'm married, and I'm a 55-year-old woman, postmenopausal, mm -hmm. and I smoke a pack a day, and I eat generally healthy. Okay, so based on your record, I see that you match just a few factors uh, related to osteoporosis. So I'm going to show you what your first run with the technician is going to look like, and I'm going to run you through something called DEXA test. The idea behind the DEXA test is that it's made to measure your bone mineral density and your fracture risk. Hold up, what are those two things? So, your fracture risk is the likelihood that you fracture your bone upon impact. And your bone mineral density is essentially just how healthy your bones are. 
So, can I run you through the test now? Yes, Dr. McKinley. So it's a very simple test. So the technician is going to take two different images from your bone using really weak, non-harmful x-rays. And the idea behind it is that they want to take two images so they can have accurate representation of the bone. They take one from the hip and one from the lower spine. And the test should take about 10 to 30 minutes. And what about the results? So, you'll get your results in approximately one or two weeks. And you'll get something called a T-score in your results. And your T-score is basically representative of your bone mineral density, which is how healthy your bones are. If you have a score of zero, that means you have the average bone mineral density of someone in your demographic. Now, if your score is negative 2.5, I'm sorry, but you have osteoporosis. This essentially means that your bones are approximately four times less dense than the average person of your demographic. Thank you very much, Dr. McKinney. Hey, don't mention that. Once the diagnosis is made, the doctor may recommend a plethora of treatment options that are unique to the individual patient's characteristics and needs. So this ends our segment on osteoporosis. Thank you very much for tuning in to our show, MD Consultants. If you had any questions or concerns, please visit our website or send an email to mdconsultants at gmail.com.